Hi guys, welcome to another Learning Electronics Repair video. I published a video very recently with this graphics card. So this is a GTX 1060 3GB, it does work, but if you tap it or you bang on the bench while it's running, it crashes. Without the heat sink on, basically, if you flex the board slightly, you can either get it to work or you can get it to act as though it has a memory fault. In other words, it takes a long time to boot up, eventually bleeps, turns the light on on the monitor, so the backlighting turns on, but there's no image. So basically, there was a lot of discussion about this. I think it has effectively bad connections or broken connections beneath either the GPU or one or more of the memory chips. And the general consensus was that I should run mats to test it and see if we can figure out. So what I want to try and do is effectively take the heat sink off. We'll flex the board. I'll give it some sort of cooling. We'll flex the board so that it works or we test it now while it's working. And with mats and then we'll test it again when it's not working once I've flexed it. And see if we always get the same RAM chip failing. And then we can maybe remove that RAM chip, if it's only one, re it and put it back on and see if it's fixed. So, first of all, I will run mats. I'm going to do this using the motherboard with the onboard video, because although I could test the card now as it is working, when I have this problem once I flex the board, I don't get an image, so I have to use the onboard video. So there's a few things you need to do to make sure this works properly for you. The first one is that you have to have a motherboard with integrated graphics. This has integrated graphics in the CPU. It's a fourth generation Intel i3, I think, in this. Maybe an i5. Well, anyway, it has integrated graphics. And in the BIOS, I can set the integrated graphics to be the primary display. So if they're both there, it will use this as a primary display and I have VGA, you can't see it it's just behind the inset, but I have a VGA cable connected to the monitor. I have no um, HDMI or DVI pulled into this. So I'll just put the camera where you can see it. I'll start the machine. I'll show you how to run mats when you run it on the secondary display and some of the problems that you may have. And then we can try and make the board fail and see what it does. Okay, so I'll just set the camera up and I'll show you first how to actually run mats on the graphics card as a secondary display. I've booted from the King's Overkill hard drive. It's a bit blurry. I'm not well set up for capturing video from the test motherboard. I will at some point sort that out. But I'll put some text in on the video so you can see clearly what I'm typing. So the first thing we're going to do is just hit LS which means list and Linux, and you can see the various folders on the hard drive. Now, you'll see we have the folder 367.56.4. This is an old version of MATS. And then we have various other ones starting with 400, which are for the 2000 series downwards. There's some that start with, I think it's 500, which are for the 3000 series newer ones, and then for some older cards. But... I'll initially use one of the four runs and I'll show you why it doesn't work, although I don't understand. I'll show you what happens and then I'll show you how I have actually got around the problem. So the first thing we'll do is go into, we'll go to the latest one, 400.281.2. So latest I have anyway, on this disc. I probably have later versions elsewhere. So CD for change directory and then it's uh, 400.2. Eight one dot two. The prompts changed to what I've just typed in. I'll just put the camera down a bit and hopefully you can see it. Um, so LS again will just list all the various things in here. You see the various software. So you can see here we have mats and mods, which is what we need. Now I can list all the PCI devices on the computer. So we can go to LSPCI. Just type the command in, you can see it, LSPCI, enter. 
And all those are a bit blurred, I hope you can see here, we have all these 0, 0 followed by something else and 0, 1, 0, 3, 0, 4. And 0, 1.00.0 0 .0 is the VGA compatible controller NVIDIA GP106, GeForce 1060. So that's how a graphics card. Now the first number before the colons is the index. This graphics card has two devices. One is the graphics card and the other one is a high definition audio controller. Both on the same card and they're both index 101 so we need to know that when you run mats on a secondary graphics card you have to tell the system to use it so if i just type mats and then minus e which is an argument for memory size and 10 megabytes to test for instance you'll see it says invalid register specified for this gpu segmentation fault that's because you cannot run mats on the embedded graphics, the VGA in the CPU. You have to tell it to use the index one for this graphics card. So the way we do that is we go again mats minus one, sorry, minus N, which is index, space one, and then minus E, and the amount of memory you want to test. We'll use 10 again. And we can try and run it. Now you'll see that we come up with a message and it's saying actually for secondary GPUs, make sure you have run mods GPU test.js, skipped RM, sorry, skip RM state in it first. So you're supposed to run this before you can test the device. But what happens, as I have found, is this. Uh, I don't need to put the dot slash in front of mods because I'm already in the folder where mods is. So I can go mods uh, and then we'll put what it says uh, GPU test uh, dot JS and then the uh, minus skip underscore or M underscore state underscore in it. A net and you have to put on it doesn't tell you here but you have to put another argument in which is minus mfg at least i found you need to put this in to get it to initialize the card and get rid of this secondary gpu's body of this message memory cycle enabled bit and PCI configuration space is turned off. So you put the argument like this. I got this from a repair wiki, and I've used this before. So if I press enter, it's now running mods. We get a fail, which we're not bothered about, actually, at the moment, because we're not interested in mods, we're interested in mats. And it's saying argument MFG is not used. So if we now run our mats on index one, I don't know why I've put a slash here, it should be a minus C, but it, it do things actually makes a difference. If we try and run it, we still have this memory cycle enable bit is turned off. Now the way I found around this, but I don't really understand why, it might be as much to do with my installation of mats and mods and Linux as anything else. But if we go back with your CD dot dot ls. We're back into all the various versions of mats and mods. And if we go to the older one, which is fine for 1000 series cards. So we'll go into that one. CD uh, 367.56.4. Yeah. We're in that folder. Again, if we list LS, you can see all the various software. And it's basically the same as the other folder, just a different version of the software. And here again, we have mats and mods. Okay. Once again, if we try to run mats, I don't need to type it again. I can just use the up arrow and find the previous command. That one, yeah, mats minus M1 minus E10. And we're still getting the same error about the memory cycle enable bit. Now, if we run this version of mods, yeah, skip RM stating it dash MFG. You'll see it runs, it does something now, it still gives you the fail, fair enough, but it did something, you can see different came up on the screen. I can now run mats on my card, in minus n which is index 1, first 10 meg. Uh, 
it take a little while but it will run and because the cord's actually working it should pass yeah I know how well you can see it says pass yeah the glare is killing the camera there yeah, pass okay so we know when the cord is working it passes now what I want to do is to try the card once I've forced it not to work. So to force this card not to work, just uh, everything is switched off. Yeah, everything's off. So we can just uh, get our card. We'll remove the heat sink. And then basically by flexing the board, I can persuade it either to work or not work. So let's get this off and let's give that a try. I have a old AMD fan, which I put some masking tape around i'll just put a little bit more uh heat sink uh, compound on it as well i've put some underneath these little pads Set a little bit onto the uh, heat sink itself so i'll stick the this cooler onto it it should help to keep it cool enough the bit of masking tape's there so if it falls so out to one side it won't short against anything but we can also, for example, just uh, slide a couple of business cards under the edge just to uh, hold it flat. Yeah, so it sits flat there. So that gives it a decent amount of cooling. This can go to the chassis fan on the PC. Now we'll know if it worked, apart from the fact whether we get anything on the screen or not. And to do this, I'll just disconnect the hard drive a moment. I don't want it to boot up. I do want to put that there where the top of my head isn't chopped off. So we'll start this up, and if it bleeps very quickly after powering on, we know it's found it. And if it takes a long time, it hasn't. So let's uh, just try it. Well, that beeps quite quickly. It could well be using the onboard video, so what I'll also do is connect the lead to this the HDMI and see whether we get any graphics out of it as well so we'll put this in here we'll try again and I'll show you if it's working so that was a bleep quite quickly I'll just test if I actually have anything coming from the graphics card I mean I may only have coming from the onboard at the moment yeah that's only giving me graphics out of the onboard but that's not particularly unusual let me try flexing the board and see if I can get it to fail. So, the way I got it to fail before, and I'm sure you saw the previous video, was just to kind of like flex it very slightly that way. That's all I need to do. Not much. I'm quite gentle. I'm not really forcing it, yeah? Let's put the uh, cooling back on it. There we go. Let's see what it does this time. Okay, it beat quickly, so I'll try and boot up now. I'll run the mat test again. I'll see if I can get the thing to fail, and then I'll show you what it actually does. Okay, guys, so I've done that. It failed the first time for me, which is quite nice of it. So let's get the camera where you can see it and see what we actually have now. We have lots and lots of failures. Let's see if we can actually view them. So there is... In fact, if we type ls in the same folder, a file called report.txt, which you can see over here, yeah? So to view that and page it so we can scroll it, the command is more. So a bit like less, but more, yeah? Report.txt. And we can see. So it looks like we just have errors in one of the banks this one here uh, fbioc 310 it looks like all the errors are on one chip which i suspect tells us which one has got the problem whether it's the chip itself or whether it is something wrong with a memory controller or a problem with the well, not so much a problem with the memory controller because it is intermittent, yeah. So whether we effectively have broken balls or connections under the GPU or under that RAM chip, I'm not quite sure. But we do at least know now where the problem is. So guys, I've run the um, software, as you can see. I've actually taken a photo of the area, so you can probably see it on here. So all the problems are on this bank here 
which is C0 or C1. We can have a look, it tells you which order they are in, but it's definitely a fault on one bank, so that was a really useful test. Let's see which one that physically is. So here is the actual layout of the board. So the chips go A1, A0, B1, B0, C1, C0, D1, D0. So you start from where the arrow is, you start from the opposite corner and you go anti-clockwise. So that's the order in which the chips run. This is basically the errors. So it's showing you here A0, A1, B0, B1, C0, C1. Now, if we look on our, again, it says A, then brackets, A brackets, but this must be A0, A1, B0, B1, C0, C1. And C0 seems to be the bank which has the problem. So if we refer to our actual card, you can see there are only three banks of memory. A0, A1, B0, B1, C0, C1. And this one, C0, is the one it is telling me in maths is the one that has the fault but as we know it's not a solid fault it's an intermittent fault and i'm expecting we've either got a problem with this or a problem with the gpu and i'll just zoom down and you can see that and why that would be there it is quite clearly now i've zoomed in you can see this better as well so a0, A1, B0, B1, C0, C1. And you can see there's errors only on C0. It goes the other way around physically. A1, A0, B1, B0, C1, C0. So I actually drew the cross on the wrong one. Ah, that's the first one. Okay. So this one here is the one that appears to have problems, not the one with the cross on. If you look at the memory chip, you will see that the tracks coming from the memory chip here go directly into the BGA or into the GPU. So those tracks actually go down there and under the chip. So because it's coming and going when we're flexing it, we've either got, I think, broken connections here under here, which are the BGA balls basically, or broken connections under here which is which well there isn't an easy way to tell but what I will tell you is this is a lot easier to take off and put back on than this is so what we'll do is we'll take this chip off we'll reboil it we'll put it back on and if it doesn't fix the problem then we'll have to basically do the same with the GPU